right, so we're on. We're on. <laughs> Carmen Townsend, thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you for uh, submitting to this interview. Um, I want to talk about the record uh, okay. that's coming out on uh, January 25th. I noticed that, that you've got a lot of uh, a lot of different types of songs on there. It, it's a really balanced record, and I'm just wondering uh, if you can tell me a little bit about how you put the songs together and how you decided that it was an album. Oh my goodness. Well, um, I guess the main thing that I wanted to do was to make every song stand on its own um, and not have, like, I mean, we play a lot of heavy stuff, but not have it a full rock and roll album, because I, I do do a lot of acoustic shows and stuff, too, so... Um, it was just what felt good in the studio. Like there were some songs that I've been playing live for years, and when we finally got to record them, it was like, uh, no, we got to work that out. So, <laughs> so it was really, it was a really neat experience because you know you think you you play these songs forever, and then you hear them finally, and then it's like, wow, that needs to be, you know, I, I don't know, taken care of a little more before we can release it into the world. But, right. Uh, right. Yeah. You, I, I read uh, I read your bio, and uh, there's a part in there that really uh, kind of stood out for me. You mentioned that at some point you've been writing songs for a long time, but but you uh, you felt shy about sharing them. And I'm just wondering, what was the tipping point for you where you decided it was time for you to kind of come out as a songwriter and, and actually put stuff out there? Um, it's really strange, because I, I knew that I had all of these songs inside, singing in my bedroom and stuff. But I kept telling myself, it's not time yet, it's not time yet, it's not time yet. And when it was finally time, like when I, I moved, I was living in Toronto for about five years, playing in different bands and stuff. And when I finally moved home to Cape Breton, like a lot of people don't move to Cape Breton to start their, rec their recording career, you know. <laughs> well, I had been singing for years, but I moved back home, I quit my job, moved back home, and pretty much in my backyard, like they're homeboys from Cape Breton and uh, we just started playing and we, we played a, we got a rock showcase at the CMAs and since that, that rock showcase is kind of in this crazy whirlwind of stuff happening, like it would be really good and then a fallback and then good and fallback, I mean it took forever to get my record out, but now is the time. <laughs> Fair enough. And you know, everything happens when it's supposed to happen, and yeah. it couldn't be at a better time right now. So I'm really, really happy about it. And really good. I'm really proud of the record, too. So One of my favorite songs on the record is uh, one that you're offering as a free download um, Without My Love. Oh, cool. And I, I think one of the reasons I like it so much is that it, it, it's kind of a black sheep in terms of the rest of the rest of the album. It's kind of a, like a rock and a punk rockabilly type tune. Yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit about how that came I'd love about. to. I have a cool story about that song. Awesome. Um, I listen to, I'm a huge White Stripes fan, and uh, when I was younger, my parents listened to a lot of like old school country, like Willie Nelson, Loretta Lynn, and Jack had produced Letter, Loretta Lynn's album, The Van Der Rose. That's right, yeah. And I heard one song on their record, and I went out and I bought it, and it never left my car stereo for a summer. And I just felt like I had to write, I, I had to channel Loretta a little bit, you know what I mean? And and that's the song that came out, and it's it's got a really cool vibe to it. It's still kind of rocky, kind of country, but we also do like a very chilled out, witchy kind of uh, acoustic version of that song. But yeah, that one stands out too. Um, I got to play like a, a 1950s Hawker guitar on that track, and the strings were barbed wire. It was like... <laughs> And they were like, you need to change the story. And I'm like, no way. I'm not touching this guitar. It sounds perfect. So, yeah. yeah, we had a lot of fun in the studio with that one for sure. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. My my friend uh, described it as Wanda Jackson fronts the cramps. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've never heard that before, ever. <laughs> Which is great. That's wicked. Well, she's put that out on Twitter. I was Wanda Jackson for Halloween this year. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. Very good. Excellent. That's so cool. I wanted to ask about uh, touring Canada. Yes. Um, you've uh, you've done uh, a, a couple of dates across the country. Now our country is very hard to tour because it's a long, it's a big country with with sort of few points in between. So what what are your impressions of touring Canada? Um, well, I did it twice, and I did it with uh, I opened for the Top Fun Orchestra, which is another band that I play in, 
Right. So we did one in the winter. We toured in the dead of winter, actually. Nice. So Thunder Bay and minus 42 is uh, <laughs> that, that's a whole other video interview. <laughs> it's great though. Like this country is so massive. Yeah. What I like about it is like you never know where you're going to end up. Like uh, some of the best shows were tiny little bars in the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I'm really excited to take this project on the road and do our solo tour, or whatever. So, right. Nice. Yeah. And you also toured Australia recently. Yes. And uh, what can, is, are there any sort of uh, contrasts that you can kind of apply to uh, touring Canada versus touring Australia? Um, we played a lot of venues where dinner would be served during the performance, so okay. it's kind of odd to play while people are sitting down. You know, we're yeah. used to the Canadian bars and there's people fighting and <laughs> in the audience and yeah. your friend Joe's getting thrown out because he drank too much or whatever, yeah. but um, it's great. We had a, a really awesome time. We played the Woodford Festival and we played Pete's Ridge. Um, 44 degrees. Yeah. Mind, mind you, uh, that was a little. Uh, that was a little crazy. Yeah, you want your money back when, if it's 44 oh, degrees, don't man, you? Like, <laughs> it, I didn't think it was going to affect me that bad, but I did get a little bit of heat exhaustion after that show. Yeah. Sure. Um, but it, Australia's awesome. It's just like a hotter Canada with deadlier animals everywhere. <laughs> Awesome, that's yeah, great. Yeah, it was that's, awesome. You've, you've done a lot of uh, promotions in, in terms of uh, a lot of online type of promotions. Um, and uh, because of this upcoming record, I'm sure you've been extremely busy with, with that side of things. So I'm just wondering, uh, what, what's the sort of key lesson that you've learned about uh, marketing yourself as a musician? Oh my goodness. Key lesson in marketing myself? Yeah. I don't know. You know what? I just for everything, my motto is go with the flow. Because you never know what's gonna happen. Like, I mean, I landed in Canada yesterday. I was asleep and got woken up by a phone call that I'm gonna be touring with Anne and Nancy Wilson for Christ's sake. That's, <laughs> that's great news. It's yeah. crazy news. It's yeah. just unbelievable. So I just go with the flow and like I've been playing this type of music for a really long time. A lot of people see like another girl with a guitar, right? And it's yeah. like, oh yeah. But then if they actually come to see a live show, it, it's a totally different vibe. It's a totally different story. I mean, we play acoustic, and I do have like slow and chilled out songs or whatever. But it's a fucking rock show. Oh, sorry. <laughs> It's a fucking this, rock show, this man. Is a, this is an F yeah. word friendly Yeah, okay, F word, yay! <laughs> I think the whole world should be F word <laughs> But yeah, it's like, just, you know, it's, it's not your typical girl with guitar. I don't want to say typical because there are a lot of amazing artists out there that yeah. Yeah. some writers, you know, but this is a rock and roll band. This is what I've been working at for a long time and it's so awesome to, to have a response like that I'm getting lately about it, like with the record being out and people not knowing what to expect and can she do it live kind of kind of attitude like and we can. So, <laughs> it's all good. It's awesome. all good. Yeah. Carmen Townsend, thanks very much. Thank you. All right. Awesome.